I really want to talk about today is how Kiwi are leading the charge. There's so much really awesome work going on in Northland, across the region, and I think Kiwi are just taking us to places that uh, for biodiversity and community-led pest control, we wouldn't be going if it wasn't for these beautiful creatures. So, and everything really is connected. The, th the work that we do for one species or for one forest or in one community or with one hapu, it just has those flow and effects. So that's my key theme today. Um, oh dear, half my words are going to be up there. This is um, a beautiful kiwi, thank you Nati Hine. This was Ho, being released out um, at Tutakaka. I think you remember this one, Mike. Um, this little guy running off into to the distance, um, he's got to be safe to do that. And the vision, I guess, of Kiwi Coast, and I think a lot of the projects involved, is that he should have the right to do that, and he should be able to roam where he wants freely and safely, and we should make it that way for him. Um, and here he is, running off, leading the charge for all this other work that's coming behind him. Um, there you go, Rolf, member Movember. Um, so, how do we do that? How do we make Northland safe and flourishing for species, for people, for our nahiri? Um, look at this engagement. When people see Kiwi, their hearts melt. And we've had people say, this is the most powerful and mean meaningful experience of their life. That's, that's pretty amazing. Lots of other things you think would trump that. But when people meet Kiwi, their hearts melt and they want to do something about it. And I'm sorry, trustees, but when people say, can we give a donation? I say, no, sorry. Um, tie your dog up. Um, what are you doing? How's your stoke control? What is your community doing? Um, so let's just keep on doing that. And what Kiwi Coast does is provide a platform of support. Often we get described as an umbrella organisation. And we say, no because an umbrella goes over the top. And we don't want to put a boundary on any of this. We're a platform of support and service for anybody in Northland who wants to get involved, get out there, do some pest control, walk your dog on a lead, and look after kiwi, forest species, whatever you want to look after, that's fine. And then hopefully we can support that to link up and join together. This map's down the back, so don't worry, you can't read all that. Our mapping consultants are just just in tears over the number of groups that are now linked into Kiwi Coast because it's getting really difficult to map, guys. And they're like, we can't get all the labels on and we've spent two days on this map and it looks terrible. That's fine. So there's now 210 entities linked into Kiwi Coast. Um, together, they're managing a patchwork of 240,000 hectares. And some people like to ask us, yes, but is that your effective trapping area? And I say no, because your effective influence on the dog owners in your community probably goes much further than where your traps are and the people that you're talking to and where the schools are and your engagement events. So this is what I would call that 240,000 hectares. It's like the area of influence that those projects have in their communities. And this is another example, like today, of just bringing people together. So we don't all just operate in our own little silos, but we come together and we share our skills and we talk about what's happening down the road and we figure out how we can do this thing of working together because it's too easy just to stay in your forest or in your work office and just go, well, I'm doing okay. Or what about, I'm really struggling with this um, and I don't know what to do. So hopefully at a hui like this, you can have those chats, find the people you need to go, how the hell did you do that? Or I've got this idea and I think this could work for you guys. Yep, we do a lot of this. We think that every, tra every single trap out there right now today should be capable of catching the pest that it's been set to trap. It's not a trap and hope approach, which is one of John Bissell's um, things that he says, it's not about trap and hope. It's about you set that trap, it is gonna catch and you do everything, everything, everything for each particular trap to make sure it's got every chance of catching the animal that you're trying to get. So a bit of a different approach. So it's not just back up the trap, back up the trap with here's all your traps, here's all your funding, here's where it goes. It's like, okay, how do you set that trap? What are some of the lures that you use? How are you going to get that animal? What else are you thinking about? Where is it going to go? So we do quite a bit of this. Um, yep, and it's, and it's the local trappers too your local experts, it's not Kiwi Coast coming in there and going, this is how you trap, it's your local trappers. They know the area, they know the people. They're the guys that have the mana and respect in the community. They're the ones doing the work. Northland Pest Control Guidelines, which we put out with Northland Regional Council, are down the back. Because Northland, we're a little bit different for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's in the water, but 
the traps that work in other places work differently here. Lures that we want to use, um, how we do our trapping. We've sort of figured out, well, Doc figured it out for us at the Whangarei Kiwi Sanctuary, um, the recipe, if you like, of how to, how frequently to check your stoat trap and how many metres it should be apart from the next one. But in terms of really getting it humming and what works in Northland, well, we've really got to keep our mind on that. So Northland Pest Control Guidelines contain most of the things and advice and skills and ideas that Northland trappers have been using very successfully. Um, I always say if you line up 10 people in a room and ask them what's the best possum trap and what's the best lure, you will get 10 different answers. And you will have the 11th answer. So if you find things in that booklet that contradict each other, that's why, because I write all of that down, because I don't know which one of you is right. Yep. Um, we're pretty action-based. It's very rare to see Leslie inside and in a white t-shirt without metal over it. So we're the sort of people who get out there and do stuff. Um, I'm probably spending too much time writing reports, but it's all about actually doing stuff, all right? Not just talking about it, because just talking about it doesn't really get us anywhere. I've got a couple of things that Kiwi Coast do a little bit differently, apart from supporting all the good work out there. Um, and there's a couple of projects that we're working pretty hard on. And Andy, there in the Mid-North, this amazing thing called Pest Free Puriroa Peninsula, which saved the Kiwi Trust jobs for nature funding, has brought in to really support, um, has been really amazing. Look at all those traps. And um, some of the Freemasons funding that has come in to Kiwi Coast, thank you Freemasons, is now looking at some pretty high tech trail cams that talk to your mobile phone. And it's so high tech, we're actually struggling a little bit with how to use them, but that's okay. We will figure it out. Yeah, and Zach, can you please come and tell us how to do that? Um, so we're starting to use better and better technology, um, making sure all the, you know, we've got the top trappers on this project and we're bringing in and boosting more and more and more and figuring out how to work with um, predator free P whanui whanui to bring in more funding to boost the work on the ground there too. So it's pretty amazing. So we're taking a little bit more of a leadership role in this project than we do elsewhere. Yeah, Wendy? And of course, this amazing project, uh, the Kiwi Link High Value Area. Um, this is within the 60,000 hectare um, muster lid control network that Whangarei Predator Free um, are supporting. And this is what we used to sort of call the missing link. In terms of creating New Zealand's first Kiwi Corridor, what the Kiwi Link 15,000 hectares does is link Todd's very high Kiwi stronghold at Whangarei Heads, his 1,130 Kiwi, with Mike, how many Kiwi you got? About 500? Uh, uh, six, seven. Okay, on the two to Kaka Coast, six or 700. A few years ago, this was empty, but thanks to NRC funds, and thanks to a hell of a lot of hard work, like Tahiki Land Care and Koanui Land Care, and all the work going on, Nangari Ford Land Care, Wendy. Um, look at all those dots. Those are all predator traps, and the kiwi are starting to flow in, as well as, of course, some beautiful Ngāti Hine kiwi um, being gifted and released in some of the southern areas. So it's starting to work really well. And if you want to see how that's going, there is reports at the back. Um, our kiwi numbers are slowly but surely um, going up and the landowners are starting to understand and lead uh, some of their own toxin operations which is pretty exciting as well. Yep. So then like Megan says you have to reflect every now and then and just say well um, that's all good how are we doing? So the other thing I guess that Kiwi Coast likes to do is go monitoring can be tricky and some people don't want to do it uh, so let us help with that. So every year if you're a Northlander, you know that I will be asking you in January for your pest control results and with those terrible spreadsheets, eh, Ian? My terrible spreadsheets. But it helps us to know that over the last nine years, 591,584 things were caught in traps, and they're summarised here. And that doesn't tell us how much is left, and it doesn't tell us if our forests are getting better. It just helps to show that every single person out there with a trap is contributing to something pretty amazing, so don't give up. Please persist with my terrible spreadsheets. Yep. And then of course, uh, Kiwi monitoring. We want to know, how is this going for Kiwi? So we steal the backyard Kiwi graphs and go, yes, it's working. Um, as an example, Wendy and her son developed an amazing Kiwi listening app to take the hassle out of those Kiwi call count reporting. And there's a handful of Kiwi with transmitters on too, so we can really figure out what those guys are doing. We've got to keep checking this. We can't just keep setting those traps and using the toxins without checking in. Is it working? 
Uh, we need to do more of this, eh, Di? Di's always saying more monitoring. Okay, yep. And then so every five years, there's something else we want to know. Not just the Kiwi numbers going up, but are they returning to places that have fallen silent without any Kiwi? So every five years, we call it a Kiwi listening blitz, and Megan Topia helped put this uh, program together for us. And we go out through what we would call the Kiwi Coast project area, that 240,000 hectares. And if it's not a high Kiwi call count site already, and there's not a human that has sat there to listen, we go and investigate and go, what's there now? So this was pretty cool stuff because um, we've done two of these now, and in our second listening blitz, we found Kiwi at 50% of sites that didn't have them the previous time. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think that means it's working. So that's not just trap and hope, that's trap and know that it's working and your Kiwi will come back. Just gotta keep going. I've gotta keep going. One day Kiwi are coming to my forest. Oh, no. Okay, yep. But what about these other cute little dudes? Um, what's it mean for them? Because this is where we get to Kiwi leading the charge. Those 591,000 things were killed probably mostly in the name of Kiwi for Kiwi. Even if a rat doesn't um, kill Kiwi, people are still trapping them hard out in the forests. And these guys say thank you very much for that. For all those stoats that you killed trying to save a Kiwi chick, actually I just got my nest through as well type thing. Yep. So we want to look at that too. And this is where we go, okay, we could monitor everything and we'll spend all our time monitoring, which could be cool. Or we just go, what if we're smart and just pick out a few really cool things that people might want to know about. So Pateki, I call them Northland's untold conservation success story. They're still, this is New Zealand's rarest mainland dabbling duck. It's rarer than their, their much more highly famed cousins, the Fio, the blue duck. The brown duck, the brown teal, the Pateki are just quietly exploding on Northland's east coast. They're still crashing a little bit there over in Great Barrier. But in Northland, they're doing really, really well. And so Doc lead the monitoring for that, and we just give them a bit of support. But we also want to know, what are kaka doing? Because they're out there on the offshore islands. Same with Korimako, the bellbird. What if they just came back? What if all that pest control, especially on the east coast, let's start there, what if those birds just came back from the offshore islands because it was safe to do so? How cool would that be? So every five years, uh, Wendy and her crew also help monitor where can we now hear and see kaka and korimako in summer? Because Dai tells me if we can hear and see them in summer, they're resident. So they may fly over for the winter food sources, but if they're here in summer, they're breeding, they're resident. That's pretty cool. Then we wouldn't have to go through a whole heap more translocation permit paperwork because how painful is that process? Wouldn't it just be easier if they just came back? That's the plan. Yep. And then I get really excited thinking about these, these, these predator-free things, these predator-free peninsulas. Like that's, that's often seen as the goal. I don't think it is. I think we're missing something here. It's about how cool is that when that peninsula is predator-free? What are we doing with it? What are we, what are we chucking in there? Takahe, tuatara, big scary giant wetters, bite your arm off. Um, how cool would that be? So that's what I think our thinking is going to is predator freeze cool, what's the opportunity that that creates and how can we help with that? So something we'll be working with for the Purirua Peninsula next year, A&D, is Pateki translocation back into that peninsula. The funny thing is, when we talked about that with some of the people on Purirua, they're like, oh yeah, Pateki. What have you got in the way of takahe? It's like, oh. <laughs> okay. But when I talked to um, the, uh, Kevin, the pātiki guy, he goes, I always said wherever we had a successful pātiki translocation, we should be putting takahe in. But he said, yeah, you find the Kiwi recovery group hard, wait till you meet the takahe recovery group. <laughs> so no, I won't be. Yep. But it comes back to these guys. Beautiful, beautiful marohi out at Turakaka. Another beautiful... Nati Hine Bird, thank you so much again. Uh, wildlife corridors. So it's not just about Kiwi corridors, wildlife corridors. Everywhere that we can link projects together, fill the gaps in the pest control and enable, enable wildlife to move and disperse safely and breed safely, we can start seeing some amazing things happen. And in Northland, of course, the huge opportunity, which I hope we'll workshop a little bit later, is actually restoring the regional gene flow of Kiwi and Northland. This is some of Dr. Ray Pierce's thoughts from a few years ago. So I'm sorry, but it's not just good enough to, have, to reverse the decline to save your Kiwi from extinction. 
or it's not just good enough to have your population stabilise and it's not just good enough to have your Kiwi population going through the roof. We actually need to reconnect these distinct Kiwi populations and get these guys moving back and forth again. Then we'll start restoring that gene flow and that's the next thing. And if we can do this for Kiwi, it'll be the only species I'm aware of in New Zealand where we've got to that stage. You know, not just saving something from extinction, but actually getting the regional population just thriving again, and that's what I think we should be aiming for. But there's some challenges in the way. This is uh, one of Emma's graphs from a couple of years ago from the Kiwi Call Count report. Look at what drought did. Emma reported every single Kiwi Call Count station in 2019 had a decreased Kiwi calls because of drought. So we can get that Kiwi population humming, but they're going to throw some stuff in our way, like droughts and floods, and we're going to get more of them. So what can we do proactively to try and stay ahead of these droughts and floods? Yep. Well, we'll come back to this, won't we? Winning these hearts and minds. I love that little guy's face. Because um, this Kiwi, he's leading the charge. And the work that is done in their name is going to help so many other forests and people and species that when we get to things like increased droughts and increased flooding and other things that are going to come our way, if we've got a robust and resilient Kiwi population and other populations, I think we're going to make it through. Yep. Talked a lot. It's a lot of data. We write a lot of reports. They're down the back. Take a look. Yep. And if any of us coordinators can help you or your project a little bit more, um, just get in touch. Um, we love to get out there with you. Thank you.